And um, welcome, you guys. Let me give us take a second to get my screens arranged, which I probably should have been doing. If you could um, drop in the chat where, if you're comfortable with that, you don't have to obviously, but where you find yourself these days and what your position or affiliation with technology or languages or both is, um, and we'll get started. My name is Meredith White. I teach uh, Spanish one and two just outside of Atlanta, Georgia in Gwinnett County. Um, and we are currently hybrid. So we have roomies and zoomies at the same time and it varies by school and it varies by even just a couple of miles. So it's, I can't believe, I, I was just telling um, Braun that I can't believe we're like this, we've been doing like computer school <laughs> for like 11 months or whatever it is we're doing. Um, and it's kind of weird to look around and realize um, that the email, like the, to realize the emails or the questions you're not getting anymore. I find that interesting because we were so inundated in like those emails in the subject line from kids that were just like, how do I check my email? I don't know what I'm doing. Help me. You know, did you get my quiz? And it was just like, you know, whatever, all of those questions. And now you see kids really, um, really pretty well versed in a lot of ways in our, you know, learning management system in a lot of different like computer features, whereas they were kind of good on the phone before, but um, it's just weird that we have been doing that so long. So I'm super excited tonight. We have wherever he is on your screen, um, Edwin Braun, who is my Spanish three teacher. It's crazy. Uh, 18 years ago. And so I feel like I'm giving, I'm nervous. I feel like I'm giving like a Spanish presentation that I was not prepared for. Um, no, I'm kidding. I was always prepared for those. Um, but it's, uh, it's just, it's been fun interviewing or chatting with really, um, uh, Marty, who was, who I had for Spanish one and two, and she's on here somewhere, wherever you are, um, looking at the gallery view, if you want to do that. Um, so she was my Spanish one and two teacher. And then I had Braun for Spanish three, um, both in high school, of course. And, um, it was just, it was, it was that whole, those three years were really inspiring, obviously for a number of reasons, but the language piece, of course, but I'm excited tonight because the technology piece was always there too. And Bron, I'm sure you're going to mention this, but I remember you had like a bunch of like, like, like new at the time, obviously Apple computers in your room. And it was like, doing you know projects and present presentations and stuff would be like okay we're going to use iMovie and this is you know 18 19 years ago we're going to use iMovie we're going to use this we're going to use that and i was like i'm here like super excited about that because it was cool and it made your stuff look cool and that really kind of shaped how i don't know how i thought a this is going to sound really biased but like how i thought a teacher should be using technology for learning and not just teaching. I think we talk about technology and teaching a lot. And what we miss sometimes is the technology for learning. And I learned a lot content wise, obviously, but then also how to marry, you know, how to express that, how to express what you've learned using technology, which I thought was really cool. So I'm super excited. And um, I'm gonna pop in here in the chat. Again, I'm gonna kind of reiterate who I am. Braun, you wanna introduce yourself and Tell us where you are. I know where you are, but <laughs> tell us all the things. Thank you, Meredith. Yes, uh, Edwin Braun. I'm in New Braunfels, Texas, which is in central Texas, close to San Antonio. Uh, I teach with Madi and Carrie Hot, or I taught with Madi. I still work with her. Uh, Dr. Montgomery, I see, is here. She, she's uh, my first love was French as far as the uh, subject, and uh, it's pretty rusty now. But Dr. Montgomery helps me <laughs> when I need it, <laughs> and uh, there she is. Um, and yes, I'm currently an instructional, techno instructional technology specialist. This is my fourth year doing this. I did 25 years in the classroom, teaching AP and dual credit, Spanish mostly. Uh, and that kind of bled off into um, uh, teaching a video tech class and then a digital graphics class, which is 3D design and animation that yeah, I'll, I'll be going over a little bit of that as, as I talk today. So. Um, but my first love was languages. I majored in French and uh, have a master's in Spanish. And um, that's what got me into the profession. We didn't have all this cool stuff back then. So I just kind of adopted it as it came along. So uh, with that being said, I'll go ahead and start now. Go for it. Yeah, can, you okay. imagine, can you imagine if any of this had existed or even like ways to share the way we can share on like Twitter and teachers pay teachers and all this? I literally like, 
what did you guys do? <laughs> I mean, like I didn't start out teaching with any of these things, but like, wow, crazy. Yeah, no. Um, right. So <laughs> I'm going to go over a lot of that today. And it's been, it's, it's been a really actually fun uh, prepping all this because I've had to go down memory lane. Uh, and that's 25 years is a long time. So uh, I've had to really dig back and uh, I've had some fun conversations with colleagues and mm. uh, uh, I hope this is interesting to, to you guys. And basically I'm gonna kind of go over, like I said, memory lane, the stuff from the past, uh, briefly discuss the, the, the present because you guys are the specialists in the present. I'm, I'm kind of humbled to be here actually with, with all these master teacher, teachers. I uh, really appreciate the, the invitation. Absolutely. And also, I, I'm going to end with uh, some possibilities for what may, we may be seeing after all this and what's to come in the future. Mm. So, or my, opi my opinions on what we may be seeing. So, yeah, here's some French for you. I've always, I, I love breaking down words and words like uh, souvenir, souvenir is the underneath of what will, will come, right? So, memories. This, these photos right here are from 1976. 1986 and 1994 are from New Braunfels High School. These were just given to me today. Um, do y'all, when I zoom in, y'all can see, correct? That I'm zooming, Meredith? Let me see, I see, no, nothing changes. Okay, then I'll stop zooming. Well, we can see, well, we can uh, see your cursor, if that helps. Okay, all right. So, yeah, so this is about when I came into teaching in the 1994 era. So these first little Apple computers, I had one in my classroom. Mm -hmm. I, the only thing I can remember using it for was typing some term papers and uh, my neighbor taught me how to use an Excel spreadsheet to do my grades and it was like the coolest thing ever because I didn't have to use my calculator anymore. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, the, uh, the behind, oops, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'll be like a little while. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I'm at my office and uh, came in to clean here. Um, yeah, so Right. Uh, again, digging back, I, I look back or at what was I doing back uh, when I like in this presentation for the college board back in 2002. Mm -hmm. I, I, I honestly didn't remember. So I had to go. I didn't have anything digitally. So I found the old packets. You can see my my uh, hole punch there. Uh, and thinking back to 2002, that's, uh, you know, that that's a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And what the technology was existing in the time. Yeah. So at the time I was going, I was finishing up my master's degree and I was studying under doctor at uh, Texas State, who was the president of computer assistant language instruction company, uh, or, or corporation, excuse me, Calico. And uh, that was an international consortium set up to figure out the best pedagogy, the best way to incorporate new technology into language learning pedagogy. Um, and it was pretty deep. I, I've since lost lost contact with that particular uh, corporation or excuse me, consortium. But at the time I was very involved in it and uh, it was a very interesting time because like, like we said, there wasn't that much technology. I mean, at the mm -hmm. 2002, I was uh, doing PowerPoint, iMovie, Hyper Studio, and then pulling it all into a web page design, which you know, that presentation, I had people just looking at me like, uh, I don't know. Right. I, remember, thing. I don't know what you're talking about. Those are the projects yeah. that I did. I remember being like, well, this is fancy. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And, it and, was. <laughs> and that same presentation I pulled, I, I, I thought, well, this would be a good way to start this presentation out. So there was, mm -hmm. a, there was a quote I had pulled from 1999 at Calico. Uh, and I, if you're, you know, you guys know anything, anything that's involved with the military and le language learning, they're usually, they know their stuff. <laughs> and this guy that says, uh, and I'll, I'll read it, uh, it is clear that the learning requirements for second language acquisition exceed those of strictly cognitive disciplines, which we're all language teachers, so we know it's harder for us, <laughs> right? Uh, it is precisely the higher demands of language instruction that led me to conclude Computers will not replace teachers, but, but teachers who use computers will replace teachers who do not. And mm -hmm. I thought that was an interesting quote from way back then. Fast forward to where we are now. I mean, yeah, it's kind of a telling quote. Yeah. Well, and, and Angela, Shannon Borum mentioned Angela Burgess, the, the nearby me 
um, and very good friend who's the district tech person. And she said yesterday, she, I was quoting her for a thing I was writing and she said, you know, we were talking about who's, who hasn't been necessarily affected negatively by this experience, which is kind of, a, you know, you get a little bit nervous saying that because this has been a really hard year, but she said, the people who were marrying like the best of technology and the best of their pedagogy. And they weren't just, you know, ignoring, like we were saying, ignoring when people like you come in or give like LMS tips and it's like, oh, tech tool Tuesday, you know, whatever. That This was probably a rude awakening for a lot of people because I think the fear is like, they just want to replace us. But like, no, you need to, you need to know how to use the things that where you work is paying for and, you know, giving you and, um, you know, put them in the hands of students. So I think that's, I think that's a perfect quote for right now. And always. Yeah. I think that'd be a good discussion point after I'm, I'm done is, uh, yeah. you know, like you and I were discussing before the, before the meeting that the, the byproducts that'll come out of this whole thing. Yeah. Uh, a lot of positive stuff that have been thrust upon our, our less, uh, our less enthusiastic colleagues, shall we say, okay. um, <laughs> that I think are, you know, in the long run is going to really benefit us. So uh, moving on, you know, as I was trying to think of what all I want to talk about tonight, you know, 25, 29, however many years, there's so many like buzzwords that come and go in education and in language learning. And I was trying to kind of piece them all together and think of what really, which, which ones really stood out to me throughout my career that, that technology helped me with, right? And of those words, these are the, the ones that I pulled out, right? That, that I feel are, are the actual things we need to focus on when using technology. Uh, authentic, I mean, reality of, of me having a, I remember back in the day, I was so happy to have like a poster from a picture of Mexico and, it, you know, these, these kind of things that were so hard for us to get now that it's, it's just everywhere. We, it, it's just impossible not to get authentic reality, excuse me, uh, realia. So um, back, yeah, I'll be going again down memory lane on, on how difficult that was. And I, I don't know how long people on this forum have been teaching, but man, we used to have to dig for stuff. Um, but these are, yeah, so these are my buzzwords that I feel as we're, you're looking at all these things that are available to you, uh, we, we should make them do all of this stuff that to where kids take ownership and have agency and they're involved in their learning and they're, they're, they, they have incentive to do it. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, we're all, familiar with crashing and his effective filter you know if all, mm. all the things that we do with technology should be focused on lowering that effective filter and i think that like meredith's a good example of someone that seeks out ways to decrease to use technology to decrease anxiety amongst students to allow them to express themselves more and that's what we want mm. in, in language learning uh so a topic that i am interested in as as the years have gone on are just the, the term disruptive technology, which if you're not familiar with that is simply an item that re completely replaces something and that, that couldn't have been done before, right? So dis disruptive technology, there are thousands of examples. This one, <laughs> I was looking at this one today, uh, full service stock brokers versus online brokers. Me and my stupid Robin Hood account, because I think that I'm the wolf of Wall Street, but I'm apparently not because I do nothing but lose money. So thanks for that uh, disruptive technology, Robin Hood. Uh, so in when I'm thinking about my time, it, it's been all, all been here at New Braunfels High School. I, I see all of these different things that I had in my classroom. And so I know Meredith is the only one that can really talk here uh, out loud for now. I can change that too. Meredith, <laughs> Uh, out of these photos, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously you have tablet available. Are, are, is there anything in here, a, a computer, that you still use in your classroom? Ooh, that's interesting. Yes, um, a paper grade book because I'm a nerd and I like to have it all in one place. And I also like to highlight. Oh my God. Okay. I like to highlight the columns. Listen, oh, no, and I and <laughs> I like the pen. I like a like a good felt tip pen. Um, you know, I would say 
<laughs> the language lab, I was just telling you, I'm about to get one. <laughs> They're gonna uh, like that, so that, that I was going to give you a hard time about because I, I created that graphic up here. And I, again, I guess I can't, I can zoom in, but you guys aren't seeing my zoom. Right. So yeah, when I started at New Braunfels High School, we had the pull down lab in, mm -hmm. in one room. And uh, I just thought, oh man, this is the, you know what, this is awesome. And I maybe used it once. I, the, the gentleman that, mm -hmm. that lived in that room rarely used it. And uh, it just kind of became obsolete. And well, I wouldn't say obsolete. I'm surprised to hear that that you use that you're wanting to have one of those in your room. I'm yeah. interested in, in how how what the current technology we have wouldn't do that for you, where you need that big physical thing. So we'll talk about that at another totally. time. But uh, so these are all the things that I see, uh, you know, throughout my teaching, um, and they've all been each and every one of them has replaced something else at some point in their life. Uh, but they've all been replaced by one thing now what is that one thing meredith out of all these photos i'd say that well let's see i'd say just the computer but like in different in different forms of it you know like if you also switched it out with like um a laptop slash also a smartphone yep i was gonna say it was this in my opinion it's the smart smartphone and the tablet that have replaced yeah. all of yeah. those things so any of those things that that were just there mm -hmm. this one item does everything mm -hmm. uh and so i mean 25 years ago never <laughs> would have thought of replacing all that stuff i just had on the screen with right with one with one item right and us being a one-to-one -one ipad district even when we started transitioning to one-to-one -to -one, i was very much again it <laughs> i was not, I'm not an old school you know my chalkboard from my dying hands kind of guy and uh but i've basically slowly seen mm. the importance and the usefulness of it um, as we've had to adapt to it mm. so a few of my personal milestones in in my classroom around 1995 i was again dis disruptive disruptive technology things that came about as i was teaching Man, when DVDs and CDs came out, mm. no more having to. You, if you're anything, I'm 51, right? But if you were ever involved in a class where you had to use a VHS tape or a cassette tape, that was the biggest pain in the ass trying to find that one exact spot for the listening portion for the next class. And, you know, over and over, it was just a huge pain in the butt. And so, man, DVDs and CDs came out. That was. Yeah, so that that helped easier use for resources for teachers uh, than PowerPoint, which I often joke was my gateway drug, and it certainly was. Once I saw PowerPoint in action, I thought I'm never doing a poster board again with my kids, especially mm -hmm. when I saw how engaged they were in the lesson, which is kind of my whole point in, in this presentation is the engagement of the student and making mm -hmm. it genuine and the agency of the learner. Uh, then, as Meredith mentioned, she she was she came along in the iMovie phase of my career, I'm sure, uh, which then, uh, and again that, and you can see in her enthusiasm in describing it, that was the way that students were reacting to PowerPoint and iMovie at the time. Mm -hmm. Like they wanted to do stuff, and when you see them involved in their learning, uh, yeah, there was I I couldn't understand why the whole school wasn't doing this stuff. It's just mm -hmm. it was beyond my yeah, uh, and then kind of went on into Final Cut Pro, which I, again, reflecting on this, I, I saw the for myself anyway, the the better, the more involved group projects forming, and me seeing how to create roles for students that are good in certain things. So Final Cut Pro, whether we generally we were doing uh, like news reports throughout the world where well, one, one kid would be in front of a green screen doing a weather report and those, those type of things and uh, and then piecing it all together and everyone had their role so i was as a teacher learning how to become this project-based uh teacher not knowing that pbl was going to be the next thing uh, i'm kind of curious if that's going to be replaced by rbl i heard that recently you know reality-based learning so we'll see what the next book buzzword that comes around is um 
And then again, reflecting on my own time in the classroom, once we started using Blogger, that was that was almost me again, unconsciously starting to deal with like a student feedback with each other. Uh, uh, the our district is very no go on uh, on social media. But this was kind of my intro to having students create things out into the world that we could comment on and, and interact. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. So the stuff that you guys have now, poof, that goes goes way beyond all this. Mm -hmm. uh, smile, milestones professionally. In 96, we got email. <laughs> and that was really cool. I thought I thought I was pretty darn cool to have an email address. Um, most of y'all were probably born with one, but I had to grow into one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh, uh, in around 2000, uh, when teacher web pages slowly started to be available online, um, that was for me a big turning point because before that, to learn anything, like you guys can just hop on this Twitter every week or every day mm -hmm. and share ideas and come up with the most amazing things. And we would have to wait an entire year and budget the money and go to a conference and sign up for the right things and good thing is just you know once the collaborative piece grew and grew as the technology grew it was so helpful professionally to have access to those things uh, yeah community resource sharing good god quizlet <laughs> if i would we had quizlet in those first 10 years of my work i would have saved me so much work right uh and now all the interactivity that's come in in the past six mm. years or six to 10, 10 years, um, that's just brought a completely new element to the language learning classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just love seeing like in Maudie's class going and watching a gym kit go down and I like sit down amongst them and start talking trash and <laughs> trying to vote certain people off. And it's just so fun. And they're all have, you know, even the, in her hybrid classes, the kids at the house are involved. And yeah, it's just, it's just <laughs> awesome. Um, and then like we're, I was talking with Meredith about the COVID byproducts. So I, I feel these interactive uh, medium are going to be super important moving forward, right? Our district has Pear Deck, which if you're not familiar with it, you're in control of what the students are seeing. They can, you can uh, have them answer questions during a presentation, right? Uh, similar to Nearpod, I don't know which, what all, uh, resources you guys use, but yes, Jamboard and whiteboard.chat, whiteboard.fi, uh, GoFormative, Meredith's a big uh, fan of GoFormative. Go so all these kind of interactive things that are here now, uh, people have been forced to use them. And that's a, a very good thing, uh, I think, in all of our opinion. I think we would agree on that. And then the last little kind of milestone piece for me has been the pr pragmatic, which is 94 when spreadsheet grading came in so i didn't have to use a calculator anymore or that stupid grade book that uh, meredith still uses out of my cold dead hands okay <laughs> I mean, come on how do you have time all right so <laughs> sorry but, uh, meredith um <laughs> so around 1999 2000 uh, computer assessments so that's when i started piecing together kind of mock ap exams for my students using different formats which you can do everything and go formative now but more it's like a pc for this and a mac for that and <laughs> piece but started seeing the ability to do assessments on the computer which mm -hmm. i'm all about reduced load for me as a teacher uh so that i can focus on preparation for for good lessons right so uh, that was a big milestone for me the centralized grade book and online grade book if you guys haven't been teaching more than 15 years it was like uh, I, I could the, the the sense of revolt amongst teachers when we found out that parents are going to be able to see student grades. I mean, for new teachers, that's uh, that's I mean obvious. But for us, there's like there's no way in hell I'll keep teaching if you <laughs> if you if you let all these parents see my grades live. You know, so uh, yeah, I don't hear that discussion anymore. Now it's just. Come on, put your grades in. But yeah, that was a, a big game changer. And I wrote here, you may not be able to see with the small text, enter the helicopter parent, right? Because that's like when the parent involvement just went up, 
up and up and up. Uh, mm -hmm. And we all know how that is. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Centralized lesson plans and the, uh, the beginnings of e-text, which for us, uh, we, we've had e-text for quite a while. Um, and I wrote here the potential to lift instructional team performance if dot 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 if mm. the instructional team is using it properly, right? So uh, in in Spanish, for example, we we are kind of ignored by our administration. Like yeah 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 sure do your lesson plans that's fine, but it wasn't until we had online that I even had to enter a, a lesson plan. I never I never turned lesson plans into anyone. I, and I was just on my own little island doing my thing. Yep. Uh, whereas core teachers, they meet, they discuss, you know, a good, I, I see these good departments working together. And I'm, I hope that you guys are all involved in those type of departments where people are, are all on board and they want to collaborate and do the best for their kids, right? We don't necessarily have that uh, here. I mean, the, the colleagues that I have on this, on this particular forum are, are the shining stars, but we're, we're a bit lacking, uh, my opinion on that one there. Mm. Uh, and then in around 2010, the social media boom. I mean, I, I'd be interested. I, some, I can see some of you raise your hand if, if you've been to, to a physical conference in the past two years. One, yeah. Maybe one. a few. <laughs> yeah. So they still exist. I'm curious how, you know, how commonplace the, the physical, uh, the, yeah, the physical trainings are going to be where I fly to Florida. I mean, I've been to some cool places for these trainings, mm -hmm. but uh, I just I'm curious to see what that's going to look like post COVID. And again, I think it's a good thing because anything I want to know, I, I throw it out there to the world and I get good feedback from master teachers that probably couldn't have made it to that uh, conference anyway. Episode five. All right. Watch so, as the character's actions. Raise your hand. I know y'all can't. Does anyone know <laughs> what this is? <laughs> can, you, can they hear this, Meredith? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Does anyone know what it is? Oh my gosh, I see some shaking heads. This is Destinos. Destinos. So, in the mid 2000s or early 2000s, I see he'll start talking here. You probably heard. You probably understood that the characters <laughs> decided. <laughs> so these, this whole uh, video video series that was made for Spanish learning, it was a big telenovela with instruction. I just thought that was the you know what that was like. Mm -hmm. Ah, we got to get that. Um, and again, it, it you know, kind of reflecting on it, it's meaningful reality. Excuse me, realia, but not real realia. I mean, I wasn't really using a telenovela. Uh, it was a made up thing for instructional purpose. Uh, but yeah, if anyone, read, I was just wanted to throw that on here because it's kind of nostalgic for me. Man. Uh, and with this one, I mean, I, to be able to pull videos back again, when we first had access to DVDs and such, to be able to pull videos to teach the stuff that I wanted to teach like this, for example, trying to teach students about uh, how the indigenous uh, finally accepted Christianity uh, in this part of the world, and which is a very com controversial topic here in New Braunfels, but I just let Carlos Fuentes ex explain it all for me, and I mean, it was just, it was just such a great resource. Los indios tenían que absorber y adaptar el cristianismo a su propia manera de ser y de pensar. Y la iglesia tenía que admitir la presencia disfrazada de los ídolos detrás de los altares. Yeah, so I don't know the 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 discussion of 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 yeah the, of selling Christianity to the indigenous. It, it took real realia to really get those uh, those conversations going, mm -hmm. and then on to the really high quality DVDs. Who knows what this is? Oh, it says up there. Ah, oh, right. dang. <laughs> Yeah, showing, showing. Yeah, I'm not going to play the whole movie, obviously, but 
but these these authentic resources that you're that before we weren't able to get right i had a couple of disney movies that were in spanish but this type of, of movie that was available in mexico or spain uh yeah it was just a big game changer when we were easily that was easily accessible to us all right so kind of uh on the present tense on the present time topic you know you guys have so many things i was trying to just make a list of all of the stuff that you guys have to choose from and if i were a new teacher or if i were an older teacher returning to the profession mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't know what to do right there's so much out there so um again i feel that all of those things have their own worth and their own value if we come back to this this screen where if you're using them for these reasons right making uh making it personalized and genuine and giving this the students incentive to be involved with their learning mm. all right um and then back with a little french here uh, so we talked with the souvenir the underneath what's to come and the ah venir the l'avenir which is what is to come that's their word for the future for you spanish speakers i think that's a cool word uh, so Right, we're now doing teleconferences with our students live. We've got asynchronous stuff, synchronous, which we didn't even know those words, be honest, before last February. Uh, you know, what's what's next? Well, there are a lot of things that are coming up and uh, mm -hmm. I, we're currently doing uh, virtual, virtual reality simulations in, in the district. Uh, we have setups to, to where students can put a headset on, go inside of the movie Coco. We can even set it up as a multiplayer event like this bottom screenshot where two, three, four kids from different campuses or different parts of the world are walking around in the same area, doing the same activities inside of the scenes from Coco made by Pixar. So, you know, just mind blowing, in my opinion, mind blowing stuff, all done in the target language. Uh, that you want to talk about involvement, yeah, yeah, no it's, it's amazing. yeah. They, there's a company called Mombly, which is working on, as you can see on the top right, uh, language simulations where uh, you're in a virtual reality setting, wow. you're doing those taxi scenes or in the restaurant scenes, only you're actually in the restaurant. Uh, and I've always kind of had a, a, a desire, like a little pipe dream, to somehow incorporate esports into my language classes. I just thought that would be the coolest thing if, if I could get my kids playing their video games against kids in Spain or Mexico or Costa Rica or wherever and doing the trash talk all in target language. Uh, I mean, it, it, probably everyone on this forum knows that's a billion dollars industry now, esports, and all the kids are doing it. Why not that be incorporated somehow into the language learning environment? So. There's a lot of interesting coming coming down the pipe that uh, down the pipe that uh, I think will change. yeah change how you guys currently think of, about technology and uh, yeah it's just it, it's hard to fathom but I think that's what's what's to come so that's all I have for my for my Google slide now I'll stop this here that's insane I didn't realize I knew you'd been. I knew like a like a fraction of that, but going inside like the movie set or going it that's like that's next level. Like yeah, it, it really is. And and just being in there by yourself, you look around and like, whoa, I'm in Coco. I'm in La Plaza de Coco, and I'm doing the things. And and the you know here's the here's the the dead uh, abuela that comes out and speaks to me in Spanish. Of course, I'm engaged in trying to understand what she's saying because she's talking mm -hmm. right to me. She's standing there with me. Um, yeah, I was really proud of that Dali uh, iMovie that I made mm -hmm. in like 2003, but it sounds which, really which like at the that. time was <laughs> most of it. I'm sure I probably presented at some conference oh, somewhere. Yeah, uh, that sounds like my garbage next to that. <laughs> but I guess we did what we could, right? That's crazy. Oh my god, we had some we had some virtual reality stuff last semester um, that was like like there was a reason it was free and i don't mean that as like any kind of diss but i think they were like refurbished 
things and they just go on like a free thing school to school so the graphics were kind of um like pre like blurry and then not not super um intuitive so they kind of lagged a little bit anyway so whatever the settings were but we did a thing i i got an email like the day before that they were going to be there and we did something uh all in english like confession it was all in english because oh my i knew the day before um for the camino and so that was kind of cool you could like walk parts of it um parts of the camino de santiago and then you could like once you got to like a middle central area if they had like a panorama you know you could like little words would pop up it was kind of cool but it was um not nearly as cool as that and not nearly as clear either so that's yeah. amazing well, and that you know that's a, a cartoony example but some of the stuff that's being done with uh, photogrammatic uh basically three-dimensional video capture now I, I, I recall when i first found a videotape of uh, dia de los muertos actual event in mexico and i thought oh this is awesome i show the kids but now those things can be filmed in and and seen sets to where you know mm -hmm. that that you talk about agency you know when you truly feel you're you're there and, and people turn and look and see you uh Here. yeah it is it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's a little different than me finding that vhs tape to that one particular spot where yeah <laughs> <laughs> rewind past it like no no no, no come back come oh on. wait 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 yeah hold on oh, wait, yeah. Far. uh that's so funny well i think like we were saying before before we started the call um you know that's that's i think what we have to i don't want reckoning to be too strong of a word but i think we really have to come to a realization and really do some reflection but some collaboration on not not always the hard parts of this experience but the the parts of this experience like i was telling you for me that have gone as just an example that have gone well um and i was obviously you all weren't there with us when we were chatting beforehand but um i was saying that i've never um i've never assessed formatively more than i have this year i mean i know what they're doing like every second or not doing right uh, every second of every class period it's like marty get logged in get logged in marty shannon you in there hola okay in tall size you know and i'm like you know, i mean it's there was just not the time or the energy to run around to 36 kids every class period and now you're kind of in some ways in a lot of these apps like you mentioned like omniscient because you can just kind of see what all of them are doing all the time and um and exactly like Shannon said, like not every activity needs a tech tool. Like, so if we can know what they're doing, if they can contribute, we can do all this formative assessment. People then go, oh, is it all graded? Is it all? No. And if it doesn't need a tech tool, like then don't do it with a tech tool. Um, but this year has really been interesting for me. I, I, I would have told you a year ago that I thought I was formatively assessing um, with every activity, like pretty frequently. I was not like not in the ways that I am now. And like you said, which was like a a beautiful point like the realia i still have yogurt cups from spain the first time i went and i've got like garbage in a file yeah. case, like That's literal trash from a from yeah. a trip in like 2007 or whatever and they're just sitting in a file cabinet but now i can pop up you know the human rights campaign and they've got the videos in the language unicef videos in the target language with you know beautiful photographs vloggers literally post a video this morning and shoot, i mean it's insane the access we have i think those are some of the um more positive aspects of this experience not to be unkind but i don't know if you would agree that i think we have a little bit better or different of a pulse on maybe how we're teaching now as a as a as a result of this absolutely yeah and i was i was going to comment someone mentions like study abroad programs being affected right now. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I went, uh, I, I don't know, five tr trips with students to Mexico and six or so to France. And, uh, you know, I, I would tell kids, look, yeah, you're going to learn some Spanish in my class, but I'll never, you'll, I'll never be able to make you fluent unless mm -hmm. you go abroad and live and live those experiences. Give me two weeks abroad and, and you'll accelerate. Right. So I think, when I when I kind of envision where the I think that we'll be able to we're not going to be able to recreate that digitally as if you you're in Mexico right. right but a lot of the scenarios that that where I learned my language like I if I didn't speak the right French at this point in time 
then I'm either going to lose my money or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of those things and those feelings that made me figure out my French or my Spanish in France or Mexico are going to be able to be simulated uh, in the same way in learners' brains. And uh, mm -hmm. so will we be able to do completely replace the museum experience as someone mentioned or the study abroad? Ex no, we won't. But certain situations uh, that that language muscle was toned, in yeah. my opinion, uh, will be able to be recreated on a digital device and uh, won't completely replace it, but it, it'll help. Yeah, well, even just the, the tools to be able to do some of the things, for example, I think of not having taken AP, but wanting to prep for the AP test. And so Marty would hand me like the workbooks, you know, and like the disc and was like, here you go, like knock yourself out. And to now be able to do things like go formative where you can actually like simulate that, that sort of mock interpersonal where it's like recording, respond, recording, respond. Um, and you can do all these different things. I mean, incredible and speed. I think it's the speed is a huge part of it is like speed in response or speed in being able to practice. Like you said, Quizlet, you know, kids can be on the bus, like on the way to whatever their soccer game and be like, you know what, we're going to be, you know, we're 45 minutes away. Let me just run through my Quizlet cards, like on the app. I have a Spanish quiz tomorrow or something. You know, I mean, that's maybe a really basic example, but just the access piece, it's like everything is, can be at their fingertips. Um, in a lot of ways, like in seconds, I don't know. Do you think teacher intention um, ha needs to change as, I guess as a result of this experience, but just as we go through the years with technology, like you had mentioned, and I completely agree, like a lot of the tech tools can be overwhelming. Like it's like, oh, what is this for? What is this for? Oh, this name is cool. And then that old underlying question, it's like, do I even need this? Cause I may not, you know, I may, it might go, oh, Nearpod, I'm already doing Pear Deck, so I don't need that or whatever. Yeah. Do you think well, um, I, we need I to be to answer, I think to answer your question, and I'm kind of cynical on this. I think that crappy teachers will always be crappy teachers. Mm. Uh, it doesn't matter, I was reading uh, Dr. Henshaw's uh, comment here. Problem starts yeah. when we equate tech use with instruct instructional effectiveness. Mm. Yeah, these things are not gonna make the students yep. learn when they're not used properly by the, the right teacher uh, and right, or the, the right leader leading their team properly, which is, wow. is something that every district needs is a good leader that can get everyone the same, the same ticket. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I, I, I don't think that, uh, that this is gonna, that these things will change everyone to the same plane. I think that the good teachers are still gonna be up here mm. and the crappy teachers are still gonna be here. They'll just be, you know, maybe a step higher than they were before. Uh, but the, the, you know, the, uh, I guess the bar has been raised by the good teachers now mm. to where they have no choice but to get up to here just to meet that gap, right? Yeah. So, well, I think technology is, is similar to this experience. You know, if you are working, um, and you said asked, so I'm going to say asked too, and you're at work, yeah. sorry, uh, for whoever I'm <laughs> like shouting out to, but um, like if you were working your ass off before, you didn't stop, you know, when COVID began, you weren't like, oh, going to mail it in, you know, so the people who were working hard before are continuing to work hard and incorporate technology and be meaningful with it and be intentional. And a lot of times pay for their own like subscriptions, like Kevin mentioned, he pays for GoFormative, me too. Um, and I just get the dirty looks from my husband and it's fine. Um, and the ones who weren't, it's almost like you said, it's like maybe like a little step up, but maybe for some even a step back because um, I can't remember, it was earlier in the chat where it was like right before this experience, like it's not like I'm, I think it was, I think it was um, Dr. Henshaw also, like I'm never gonna be an online teacher. You know, someone had said, and then it's like, March 13th of 2020 happens and it's like, mm, maybe, <laughs> like you might be tomorrow. Um, and I think, I think that's the frustrating part for a lot of teachers is it this, you know, when it comes to technology that can feel like another thing to do. And so they can feel like I'm already working my ass off and now I got to learn this other thing or I have to, you know, it's like the, the bar just keeps getting higher, but I think you're right. I think we were maybe like we're doing that to ourselves in some ways and putting some undue pressure when it may not need a tool, 
but also you may be using something already that already does that and there's no yep. need for that mm. mm -hmm. interesting there's something else i was going to ask you um i hadn't thought about do you going back to the grade book because i will <laughs> i will never not use it no um i also just have this fear of like i will be that person that like all of a sudden the server goes down and they're like meredith what did Maria have? And I'm like, I don't know, like a 94, like a nine, like a 90 something. Like she, you know, and then she had like a 64 and I, you know, I'm that person. So I also have a fear of like everything crashing. And so I keep the paper grade book, but I never thought about until you said the parents seeing the online grade book, because with this conversation all the time, our grade book just went to live grades. So before it refreshed at midnight, so you could do a little teacher magic and it was okay. You know, like Maria had an 89 and it was like 90. <laughs> and then like at midnight, it just kind of looked like something went in or whatever. Um, but now they can see it live. And that was kind of, uh, that was um, I don't, upsetting for a lot of people because you had to go in and like update quickly, which whatever we should be doing anyway. Um, but I had never thought about that increased transparency aligned maybe with decreased trust if that makes sense. Like if I wanted to get my Spanish three grade from you, I had to like go to you and go, hey, hey Senor Bron, um, can I see my grade for you? And I had to like have all my little papers cause I'd have them with a grade back in my folder. And I'd be like, seems like I have a B, but mm. um, then I would go ask you, you'd get out, like you said, the calculator, you'd look across, you're like eh, 92, great, thank you. Yep. Appreciate your time, you know, whatever. And then like run away. Cause it's like so nerve wracking to ask your teacher for, like your grade, now they have instant access. Do you think there's a correlation between that? Like between that's the transparency great, and the trust? Yeah, that's that's an excellent point. And just sitting here thinking about it, I just don't think that, I can't recall any kind of helicopter parents previous to that in my yeah. career. Like uh, maybe a couple of parent conferences where you sit down and show them in the grade book, their actual grade, but very few. Uh, and you know, and New Braunfels is a district that has a pretty, uh, we're fortunate that we have a pretty large population of parents that are involved. I mean, it's, it's a good yeah. thing. Uh, some people are in districts where they, I wish I could get one parent phone call. Mm. Uh, for us, I, I don't know. It's like you said, it's, it's adds a, that one bit of extra stress and judgment and we're teachers are already being judged nationwide anyway. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, that, that particular piece when it happened was was uh, not my favorite uh, mm. milestone and neither was it for any of my colleagues. That's so the interesting. Yeah, because I've said I've said this a couple times, like because what it um, what it then begets is you know, let's say the quiz, it's, it's like a double-edged sword. The quiz is available. Let's say it's an interpretive quiz, listening, reading with some self-graded questions, because God bless, uh, we love anything self-graded. And, you know, they do it two weeks late, but then two minutes later, it's like, did you get my quiz? Did you put in my quiz yet? Like, well, hold on. You, you know, I didn't, because you can see what's in there. And so it's 9 p.m. on a Saturday. Like, no, I did not. So there's something, there's something about that transparency and access piece that because it wasn't there, like you just said, you have to, you had to schedule a meeting and you'd sit down, like you said, it'd be like, you know, glasses, open the grade book, like, well, says she got a 64 on this quiz. Like, it's almost like, why are we even having this conversation? She knows the grades she's got, whatever. Um, now it's like, we have to come, I find myself responding to emails and going to things with receipts and screenshots, you know, like I'm showing up like, see and it's time stamped and she didn't do anything and then i have it over here she said she turned it in but it's still blank and i don't know why she thinks turning in a blank doc is okay <laughs> you know and that kind of thing and, and we're almost like proving ourselves even though the tech is so powerful that it's like we don't we shouldn't need a defense because here it is yet we have to provide it a lot of ways and I've, I've never made that connection with that time period until like just now, just when you said it. And I thought, wow, that's in, in, it seems like in an effort to increase transparency and increase partnership and maybe, you know, supporting each other, we've actually decreased, um, yeah. I don't know, some that's teacher true. autonomy. That's true. I agree. I yeah. was wanting to comment on what Shannon said here. She said, mm -hmm. uh, and I agree with this, uh, we go to quarantine and immediately we as a district, we're teaching our kids, our, our kids, Pardon me, Carrie. Our teacher, <laughs> how do you <laughs> Freudian slip? How to use like uh, 
either quick time to record their videos or loom to record their videos yeah. and just yeah. having to teach people to pre-record lessons mm. quality lessons and get them out and so like like shannon points out here that's not very high on the substitution augmentation modification redefinition scale right and right. we focus on that as a district i mean we it, it, in it in order for to kind of move up that scale in a weird quarantine type of scenario it takes people to think way outside the box mm. of, of how we're going to do that i mean i just thinking now, I mean, I could, I could pop on that headset back there, join the, the Zoom session from that computer, project, mm -hmm. share that screen to you guys, hop into Coco, and you guys in the target language could tell me, no, 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 vayan para allá, vete para allá, recoge esto, and you guys could walk me through all the things, and right, that's redefining something that couldn't have been done before, and it takes right. that those type of that type of thinker and leader in your department to to, mm. to 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 move up like like shannon said on the the samur scale so yeah nice nice observation shannon man well and just like you said the the collaboration piece of you know how i use my course team as an example because i'm i'm really really lucky we all bought go formative because we were like this is about to be cool and you can send the copy link. So if I make one and Marty wants it, you know, she can take it. And then Marty's like, hey, Maria, you want it? Great. And we can all just like, sorry, the only faces I can see. Uh, and so we can just like, boop, boop, you know, share all the things and you copy it. I mean, before you had to like observe a colleague or get chatting and be like, oh, hey, that worksheet's cute. Let me see. Okay. When are you, when are you using those game board pieces? I'll use them Wednesday and then you use it. Okay. But make sure you put them back in the baggies. Don't lose any. There are exactly 30 sets, you know, that kind of a thing. And now it's like, oh yeah, send me the Google doc link. Send me, I mean, Shannon has saved my bacon with that freaking feedback document. I'm like, copy, like, thank you. Because it was like a collaboration at a workshop and then we got chatting and then followed up. So it's like that circle of all the things, which has never been easier. Um, I, I find the increase in technology to also be a reason like there's never been more opportunities and more ways to not collaborate, especially with the people near you. And therefore, I feel like there have not been, there have never been fewer excuses to do so. Like if it's still like, close my door, and I work, I teach the same thing as other people. I think that's something we need to reflect on now, maybe more than ever, but probably should have been. Um, singleton teachers, obviously not you. And if you're the only one teaching your prep, not that. But like on my course team, I'm one of five who teaches level two right now. I can't just like stay in my cave and, you know, do my own thing because I'm going to end up, you know, kind of screwing over my colleagues to a degree um getting them ready and those organic conversations aren't going to pop up i'm not going to see like my colleague hannah's gift with formatting and uh my colleague elsie's the way she kind of puts together instructions beautifully and we kind of get to share all of our the best parts of what we do so i just i have a hard time understanding why people wouldn't take advantage of you know the ability to share these days okay mm -hmm. yeah, that's uh an issue that we have with uh, some of our colleagues where yeah we, there are many many examples uh, many opportunities for them to to grow and it's not until they're forced to uh like in a the quarantine type situation where they actually do it as opposed to the master teachers like you guys that are looking and reaching out and collaborating and come up coming up with more effective ways every day yeah uh, to do what a worksheet used to do in the past or try to do i guess well and i think like you said i don't think anybody's like if you were doing it before you're doing it now like a lot of the behaviors like transfer i was telling marty when she was on mm, last month it's all like flies together now yeah this <laughs> seems recent um oh, it's like blurs day what day is it um when she was on i remember like just the like the classic teacher moves still work you know it, collaboration and technology and all those things if i wrote something she'd go oh and this happened a few times like wow impressionante i'll be right back and i don't know if she went to the bathroom or where she went but what where she said she was going which was like oh was like to bring the writing to show like you or somebody else like look what our level two students are doing look what our level one and i was like oh gracias <laughs> you know like so flattered by that and it was 
you know, that to me was also collaboration. And that was really inspiring just to go talk to your colleagues, show them student work, show that you don't need to do that with technology, but you can, like we keep, we keep a lot of writing prompts in our Google Drive for our department and then like student samples in that same folder. So when it's like, here was like this per like here's a hundred, here's a 90, here's an 80 from last year or here's some examples. I mean, just chatting with your colleagues, showing them things from different levels. To me, all of that collaboration with technology and with all those tools also is just classic alignment, I mean, which you would hope to have. I don't, why do you think people with all the technology tools are still resistant to that? If you had to guess, you can be honest. In my opinion? Yeah. Uh, just, Fear of change, fear of what's different, fear of what they don't understand. And I was reading a comment here uh, that, that someone wasn't too uh, using too much tech pre-COVID. And I tell teachers like that, it's okay. You know, if you see a, a really cool thing that's, that Meredith or someone else is doing on Twitter, or some sort of PBL that's like, whoa, they're using this program, they're creating this stuff. And it's, you don't have to learn, you, you the teacher doesn't have to learn that. You just give the concept to the students. It's on them to learn the technology, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that that fear of uh, not being smart enough to know, like I haven't used GoFormative because I don't have a class, right? right? So everything you say about GoFormative, I on my head like, oh yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking <laughs> about. I don't know what you're talking about, right? I so, like. <laughs> but but I, I know that I'd figure it out, right? Or I'd have a student right. help me figure it out. It's Dude, so that's the thing I need to be using then empower the students to, to figure it out for you. And yeah, with technology, it's, it's, a, it's an intimidating thing to so many people, but not to students. And so. <laughs> right. It seems like it comes down to power and control in a lot of ways. Like, again, if you were like nervous, like without using technology, if you were nervous about losing control or losing power over the students in your classes, you're probably, your fears are probably transferring to also the technology. Like, well, if I don't know how to do it, how yeah. do I know they're yeah. not going to, Whatever. Yeah, the, the the sage on the stage versus yeah. the, the 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 coach help, helping things along. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good point. Yeah, losing that control. Yeah, and I'm sitting here thinking. I wonder if Meredith is actually the one that taught me iMovie. Maybe you probably don't. Maybe you um, don't even know it. I probably forced you to learn it, and then I learned it <laughs> over your shoulder. Well, like, I remember I made. I, I like I, like I said earlier in the chat, like. It was so professional. Like it made your stuff like like you're being the general you. Like you pop some scan pictures and it was like smooth. Like it was so nice that it felt like super professional. I don't know if you remember, I came in for like a month um before Christmas, like from dates are hard. Like Thanksgiving all the way, so like not great. Like maybe mid-November all the way to mid-December. I came in like for a month at six in the morning, like because you got there hella early I remember and I was like what, what's like the earliest like I'd like to make a video but I don't have this like nice computer so I'd like to use your nice computer because you had like 10 or whatever like a bunch of them in the back like lining the room um like can I come in scan a bunch of pictures put them in there I don't want to do Spanish it's going to be in English like it was just for my parents like for Christmas and you were like yeah whatever and so I came in like had to burn all the music scanned like 200 pictures Put them all in an iMovie and then I had to burn it as a DVD like 17 chords later you know and everything whatever and that was that was like a that was like a moment for me of like this is cool and you don't it was so user-friendly it wasn't like you had to be a professional like you could make professional I probably look terrible I, I should find that tape but like professional looking stuff and my parents were like, oh, you know, like, like loved the video, whatever. And it was like a montage, you know, like one song with a, it was not exciting, but I felt really proud of that. And that was a really exciting yeah. moment of, you know, using stuff and, um, and it was the access. It was the access to the technology that I wouldn't have had at home. And someone who said, yeah, go ahead, use it. Because what else is it doing sitting there? Like, of course, you know, it's all yours. So I yeah. think that was an early that was an early aha moment for me, knowing I wanted to be a teacher, like we can use all the technology we want, but are we putting it in the hands of our students? And what is it they want to do with it? Like if we're making, if they don't want to do what we're having them do with it, then what is it? Not what does it matter, but kind of what does it matter? Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. And as some more of the comments over here of that, that empowering the students and we're project-based learning. Uh, 
campus, which is the buzzword, but it, it, mm. you know that, that that sense of accomplishment that the students get when they do a properly done PBL, uh, like you just explained the whole process, right? I, I probably didn't do, tell you how to do any of that crap you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. You had to figure it all yeah. out. We had this stuff, yep. but you figured it all out on, on that sense of accomplishment at the end. Mm -hmm. It's something that, that could have been something that got that one kid to like the language that much more. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Well, it's it's the most in-depth I've ever learned. Like putting together those presentations was the first time and maybe one of the only times I have all of my education too in like world language education. So I don't know what this says about that, but like the, that's the most in-depth I've ever learned about artists, authors, yeah. and mm, yeah, like like major figures in the Spanish speaking world in turn like in 19th century art and literature was not in college, but it was in Spanish three because we're like, you know, searching pictures and again, putting them in, in, you know, an iMovie and then presenting about them in the target language. And that was, that was, I don't know, I guess now maybe students would be like, eh, it's okay, but I made a Prezi, you know, or I went ahead and I did a, like a snap, Snapchat montage, whatever, but it's the same concept. It was, we had control over it. And I remember that weather video. I was the weather person. <laughs> I remember I was like holding up like an air umbrella, like esta lloviendo, and you know I'm like, <laughs> like it was that was like truly collaborative because that was one of the only times probably in high school I ever had that that experience of a technology project like that. Yeah, and I think as people try get back onto campus and try and use some of these things, whether it be just a, a more advanced video editing like you're talking about that you won't have in your classroom or even if your campus has virtual reality, you'd be surprised when you reach out to the teachers that do have those, whether it's a broadcast journalism teacher or a 3D design teacher, they would love to send students mm -hmm. in your class, get a cross-curricular project going where they're helping you do these things in the target language. You know, So reaching out to the people that have those, those items on your campus, you'd be surprised at how much they want to share. And, my personal like recommendation is to go around and bar and that in fact that's how I had all those computers was I went and found the stuff that people weren't really using and borrowed them. Shut up. Oh, amazing. And then just waited and waited and waited and then never mind. Right. right? So that's a, a good way to acquire things is <laughs> go, go and find the things you need and borrow them for a little bit and see if they ask for them back. Are you saying I made my parents Christmas movie on hot computers? <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably so. Yeah. How else was going to get a lab with the with our department money? Yeah. Yeah. So. They were different colors. Uh, I do remember that. Like yeah, the back those are the IMAX with the not with a the, matching set. Interesting. Yeah. If I had known, my God. Right. I know Mari's like, yeah. Because they were like on, you know, on site, like great. And then you turn to the side and it was like like the whole it took out like the whole countertop. That's so funny. Um, I'm yeah. gonna definitely dig out that video now because I gotta find it. Oh, no. Well, thank you so much. I'm sorry we went seven minutes into the after party, but I, I blame you for two things. Um, my talk. extreme level of trash talk to students, because when they're playing Gim Kit or Blook It, I'm like, it, I'm like getting, you know, I will be in their head and they're like, you're so distracting. Well, you should be better at the game. Um, and I blame you for my obsession with technology and language learning, because you, you, you truly did. That was, that was a connection that was really brought to life um for me i had already we had always had like computers at home or you know little things whatever but but nothing like the way i i could create with the stuff that we use so that's that's been a huge part of my teaching and so i i think that was just from being a learner with you so i appreciate that and thank you for tonight we yes we thank so you so much for the for the uh for the invite thanks for everyone for listening to me blah 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 for a while please the, the beauty of the mute, y'all are all muted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh. too bad for this time. I'm, I'm gonna leave, I have a worst fest cup, but there's just water in it. So I gotta go oh, solve sad. that problem. Yeah, yeah you, you guys are already <laughs> partaking. And I'm not, Carrie Highland, this is just water in here. It's just water. So. <laughs> it's a worst fest anyway. cup. So. Cool, well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you guys, take care.